So I actually don't have any like quick remarks or anything about the episode itself or anything actually to to you know make fun of or to be funny or anything like that because this episode of Fairy Tale it was very emotional if you have seen it already and you know spoilers if you haven't but you know I'm assuming you have since you're watching this but we see this episode that Lucy has to sacrifice Aquarius to in order to summon the Celestial Spirit King and that way so he can you know help her you know win the fight against the rest of Tartarus since she is essentially all alone in this episode and she I would say she doesn't Lucy doesn't I feel like Lucy doesn't have that like tactician uh, ability like uh, the the first leader of Fairytale Mavis has due to the fact that you know if she played her cards right she, I feel like she could have summoned more you know I want to say more powerful uh, celestial spirits but you know more spirits that will be like more beneficial in that in the environment that they were in and what I mean by that is I feel like that Virgo didn't really need to be there uh, I feel like she was just kind of there for fan service due to the fact you know she, she showed up in her bikini uh, version but you know I feel like if she summoned is it Tar Tauros? Um, I feel, no, Capricorn. I feel Capricorn and, you know, Loki and Aquarius would have been a nice combo right there due to that Capricorn. I feel like uh, he, I'm pretty sure he's more like hand-to-hand, -hand, like, focus more than uh, Virgo is. And then so is, like, Loki. But anyway, you see what happens. I saw what happens. We see that, you know, Lucy breaks her uh, key for Aquarius in order to summon the Celestial Spirit King because that's, that's the only way. And, you know, we see him come in and, you know, before, while all that is happening, while, you know, Lucy's doing all this, like, charging up, essentially, we see all these flashbacks and, you know, we see, like, all the moments that Lucy has had with Aquarius, you know, from young to now. And it's, you know, it's supposed to be heartwarming because, you know, even Aquarius, even though she is a big tsundere, you know, when it comes to Lucy, basically her being a tsundere, she, she cares for Lucy. And, you know, Aquarius does that little uh, trope. I don't know what it's exactly called. Like the like the professional term, I guess you can say, call it. Uh, like where, you know, they use like every mean word they can. It's like, I never loved you. I hated you. So just do this already. And, you know, that happened. Now, there's one thing from the filler arc that, uh, that was actually beneficial to like Lucy and Aquarius' relationship. And we see in this episode, and I guess it's just to kind of give an, like, an extra scene for those who like skip the the filler episodes but it was basically when you know you see Aquarius watching Lucy sleep and just like recalling all these memories and you know in that in the filler arc itself I just watched like I believe that's the only arc I, I watched but it was like she essentially you know Lucy summons all her spirits and is like hey I want to thank you guys for being with me so what do you guys want and you know she gives all these people the Celestial Spirits what they want and you know it just it creates a nice moment between uh, Lucy and her celestial spirit but something that interested me when I you know finished watching the episode I was like you know taking out notes in my head it's like you know when it comes to media how far you know does it take you to for you as a as a viewer and you know to to make you cry essentially like for me personally it, it kind of takes a lot because I remember the last time I actually teared up watching something was I believe you know Plastic Memories, and that just recently aired, and I reviewed it if you want to see that. Uh, and the other one was Your Line April, and I reviewed that as well. Shameless plugins right there. And, you know, because this moment is specifically when, like, when Lucy sacrifices Aquarius' key, and, you know, Aquarius in general, you know, it didn't essentially make me cry. And, I, and, I, and I'm not saying that, you know, Hiromashima and, you know, the animators did a horrible job on portraying, like, the feelings and all of this to, to not make me cry, because it's, it's not that at all. Because the thing about Fairy Tale and compared to like Your Lie in April and Plastic Memory is that, you know, in Your Lie in April and in, in, in Plastic Memories, excuse me, you know, you, you get this feeling that something is going to happen, you know, something very sad, and it kind of keeps that tone, even though, you know, some there are comedic moments within there, but, you know, it keeps that underlining tone of sadness and, you know, something, you know, emotional is going to happen, and, you know, you get a connection with all the characters because, you know, those animes are like character folk so therefore when that emotional thing happens at the end you know you tear up and be like oh, man I knew this was gonna happen blah 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 you know now I'm crying stuff like that uh, but you know in this case in fairy tales case it, it essentially doesn't do that due to the fact you know Lucy and Aquarius they don't have much screen time together and when they do you know it's bickering and all that and you know they show that as most of their moments but you know it's in one case it's funny and in the other it's you know it's trying to build character relationships but, you know, 
like fairy tale, like I said, it's always switching but back and forth between like etchy and comedy and to you know seriousness and power of friendship and we gotta win this fight for the one all that whatnot. And you know, that's what Fairy Tale does best and you know, I feel like one of the things that Fairy Tale does better is like the action sequence and then you know that's what most people watch Fairy Tale for that and you know the boobs. But that's just my personal thought on that, you know. Uh, there are probably other reasons why people watch Fairy Tale and you know I'm just saying th those are partially my reasons for watching Fairy Tale and not saying that that's everyone's public opinion. Another I feel like another good example is like in Game of Thrones, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but if you know, a lot of people die in Game of Thrones and I feel like that, you know, after the first few major character deaths, you know, in Game of Thrones, it's like Oh no, this is what happens. Because you still see people, you know, you see reaction videos at bars, and then people are like, oh no, this character died. And like, oh no, my favorite character. And it's like, when that happened, when I'm watching Game of Thrones, it's like, oh man, that sucks. Maybe that character shouldn't have done this and that. And you know, it's like, oh well, time to pick a new one. But yeah, this has always, definitely always piqued my interest about, you know, like media and entertainment in general. It's like, how far does something go to make you sad? And you know, and to make you cry because like stuff in like I Am Legend, you know, when the dog dies or becomes infected, and then you know Will Smith's character has to put it down, you know, that's emotional to me. It made me cry, and you know, the other moment like in another Will Smith movie, co co coincidentally, is like Pursuit of Happiness. You know, when you know all, like that, I don't remember exactly, but that one moment with his son, where it's very emotional, where you know he has to tell him, you know, we can't, we don't have enough money to get this. Anyway, you get my point. But my question to you guys is, you know. How far does media and entertainment, it doesn't have to be exclusive to anime, you know, how far does media and entertainment have to go to make you, you know, tear up? And if you want to list examples, go ahead, I encourage it, but, you know, also tell me, you know, did this episode make you tear up? And if not, uh, how could, you know, the animators and Hiro Mashima could have done it differently to do so to make to make you tear up about, you know, a crazy goodbye to Lucy? But yeah, I, that's that's about it for the episode. Um, I just want to give you guys a heads up if you guys collect anime figurines. Um, I just started collecting them because I know that Amiibos are ending soon. That's not exactly true. But there is a uh, foot-sized Erza figure. Here's a measuring tape for scale. Uh, my Arise thing is about uh, 8 inches, so it's Erza about this big in her bikini outfit from the from the 5th OVA, the yellow legendary uh, bikini outfit, if you've seen that OVA. Um, and she's holding a fan, a happy fan I believe. And yeah, it, I think uh, it's like 100, it's going for like 130, is it what the pre-order price is and the price, you know, the retail price. So just a uh, heads up, kind of sad that I had to, you know, change tone to talk about, you know, Ares' figure. Uh, am I picking up personally? Nope. Too expensive. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't look like Ares' for some reason for me personally. It, like, like, most of, like, Air, like Ares' shape inside the anime and the manga, it's like she has, like, an hourglass shape. But then, like, in this one, it just kind of, you know, it's just, it's just, like, a regular Ares. Like, if Ares was realistic with her proportions, like, her body and her proportions together, it's kind of like that. Is that body shaming when it comes to anime characters? Because if you guys know, if you watch my other anime reviews, especially like Snow with the Red Hair, I encourage strong female characters um, and stuff like that. But, you know, is, is it body shaming? I feel like it's body shaming. I do apologize if I offend anyone by uh, saying what I just said. But, yeah, I'm not picking up, but it's a heads up for you guys. I'll probably, I'll try my best to leave a link in the description below. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Thanks for watching. I thought it was a great episode, probably the best episode of this arc, maybe. I don't know if I said that statement before in any of my other reviews, but if I haven't, I'm going to give it to this one for now. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching. See you guys out next time. And, you know, don't forget to leave me your thoughts uh, down in the comments below. So, yeah. Bye-bye.